this is the presentation number four for radiological anatomy of the brain prepared by Prof. Sharaf and devised by Prof. Ram Edward just to revise what it is, this is the lateral ventricle, what is that one it is the region of the corpus callosum, what is G G is interhemispheric fissure and valves what it is, this is the region of the straight sinus and what is this occipital loop this is a nice presentation for the commissural fibers connecting both cerebral hemispheres together we have the genome of the corpus callosum we have the body of the corpus callosum and now we have the splenium of the corpus callosum and this is a call, it's called commissural fibers the other commercial fibers are seen anteriorly. What is there above this level of commercial fibers? This is called the, I mean, above the corpus callosum. This is what we call the centrum semioval. Centrum semioval. These are the cortical cortex of the brain and the white matter inside or what we call corona radiata it's another example so what is this again this is the falx this is a straight sinus and this is a superior sexual sinus any one gray like this is a gray matter of the gyrus and the any CSF containing space like this is called sulcus. At the level of the body of the corpus callosum, lateral ventricles, superstructural sinus, straight sinus, valves, cerebri, and in the end, interhemispheric fissure. Frontal lobe, parietal lobe. Frontal lobe, parietal lobe. There is no occipital lobes here, and there is no temporal lobes here. The occipital lobe is posterior, while the temporal is on either side of the region of the third ventricle. So these are the corpus callosum at the central semioval and the central semioval they are representing the start of the corona radiata. This is the central white matter of the brain. Central white matter of the brain, frontal and parietal loops. Central white matter. Again, we are talking about falx and, this, and its fissure and the region of superior sinus and the region of the superior sinus as it is curving from back to front. Now, where is the frontal loop? You remember that on either side, almost at the middle of the parietal region, there is what we call central sulcus. The central sulcus divides that region up into frontal and parietal. The frontal, if you remember the frontal region, so we have the superior frontal gyrus and the two adjacent frontal lobes are, are looking to each other by what we call cingulate gyrus. They are in contact to each other by the cingulate gyrus on either side. So we now hear about superior sagittal, uh, superior frontal sulcus and gyrus. We heard about central sulcus and we heard about cingulate gyrus. 
this three represents the outlines of the frontal lobe. Posteriorly, it is limited by the central sulcus, the yellow dash. Anteriorly, there is the superior frontal sulcus and the gyrus, while medially, there are two cingulate gyrus contacting each other. Remember that this frontal lobe has many important things as this is the primary motor area and this is the broccus area. Never mind about others, but keep in mind this one. Central sulcus, superior frontal sulcus and gyrus, cingulate gyrus on either side, medially contacting each other. Of course, so long there is central sulcus, in front of it will be pre-central and posterior to it will be post-central. But what is limited by the central sulcus is the frontal, home, uh, frontal lobe and posteriorly is the parietal lobe. Another important line is the sylvian fissure. If, there is, if you can recognize the sylvian fissure on the surface of the brain, that means that what is below this fissure is the temporal loop. So we have another sulcus here, or another fissure here, which is called the sylvian fissure, separating the temporal loop from the frontal and parietal. Any cut in this area will be passing through frontal and parietal. Except if we reach down here, we now pass within the and frontal and the temporal as it is lying in the temporal fossa or middle cranial fossa. Occipital lobe is this area will go soon to it. Now, where is the cingulate? This is the medial portion or the middle part of the front of the frontal lobes. Where is the cingulate? This is the cingulate. Cingulate sulcus and cingulate gyrus. Cingulate sulcus and cingulate gyrus. And this is the central, as we know before. The stashed one, paracentral sulcus, and this is the central sulcus. It doesn't reach here, it just terminates here. So this is the termination of the central sulcus, but this is a continuation. Now, don't forget that the occipital loop is a very small loop, and is the, the part of the brain just above the cerebellum, and separate from the parietal loop, but one, what we call a parietal occipital fissure, if you can recognize it. Just it is the posterior fifth of the brain, posterior fifth of the brain above the cerebellum is called is the occipital loop. So this is the medial part of the brain, cingulate gyrus, cingulate sulcus, the central sulcus is reaching here but not continuing, anterior para central or anterior central and marginal or posterior central. Then we have the parieto occipital fissure, which separates the occipital from the parietal. Now, as you see, there is no sharp demarcation between lobes of the brain. Now, what is this? This is the region of the temporal lobe, or what we call the opercular. And in the opercular, we have three segments, which you should send related to the sylvian fissure. This is the sylvian fissure. Related to this sylvian fissure, front is anterior or the frontal, middle is the central, 
and posterior is the posterior again the division is not sharply defined but you can recognize that, that at least there are three finger like processes here one two three and these are the operculum opercular regions we are trying to put names just to correlate with, the, with pathology so if you have such a pathology for example this is the medial part of the brain and this is the region of the frontal sinus a frontal lobe and this is the region of the parietal lobe and this is the region of the occipital lobe and here in this area will be the cingulate gyrus and here is the cingulate sulcus and here there should be central sulcus here it is the one and this is just anterior to the central sulcus and just anterior to the central sulcus we have an AVM just anterior to the central sulcus near to the midline can be seen extending along the medial aspect of the brain of the hemisphere now come to this one if you remember we just talked about a central sulcus and post central gyrus and the pre-central gyrus. What is involved here is the posterior central gyrus or posterior to the central sulcus. We have edema and we have a tumor. This is deposit. So the deposit is seen posterior to the sulcus at the region of the posterior central gyrus. Another lesion, you can identify that this lesion is in the superior frontal gyrus and this is a superior frontal gyral uh, uh, glioma remember that the most inferior part here is constituting medially the cingulate gyrus and this is a cingulate sulcus and that medially the central sulcus is not reaching but here posterior it is seen well defined and it is here projected posterior because of the angulation of the plane. Now where we are? Here we are in the cingulate gyrus. Just at the end of the cingulate sulcus. This is medial aspect. This is the corpus, this is the third ventricle, and here is the lesion. It's parasagittal, if you want to say parasagittal, but so long you can't recognize it in the sagittal views uh, uh, just above the corpus, it is in the cingulate gyrus. Now come here to the what we call the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe started from the central sulcus, as we have seen, limited by the sylvian fissure, giving the temporal, temporal lobe, and limited posteriorly, but what, but with what we call the temporo parietal, uh, the temporo occipital sulcus, or what we call it as the angular gyrus, angular gyrus and sulcus. This is the region, or we call it as the parieto occipital sulcus, and this is called the angular gyrus. Angular means that it is at the angle of the brain. This is the most posterior part of the parietal loop, angular gyrus. So we have the sylvian fissure, we have the central, we have the pre-central, we have the post-central, we have the angular gyrus limited by the parieto occipital sulcus, this one, parieto occipital sulcus limiting the occipital loop posteriorly. Now, medially, 
in the medial aspect can recognize the parietal lobe as limited by the central, which is not, not reaching. So we extend it anteriorly a little bit to involve, to include the paracentral lobule and surely you can go down here to see the parieto occipital fissure on the other side, on the outer side of the brain this fissure is limiting the angular gyrus and of course the parietal lobe is limited by the what do you call this? Singulate sulcus and gyrus. Singulate sul sulcus and gyrus limiting the parietal lobe anteriorly. So this part is be belonging to the frontal lobe while this part is belong to the parietal lobe and immediately as you see the main part of the brain is mainly frontal while in the parietal is limited, is uh, showing part of the sulcus central and pre-central gyrus and post-central gyrus. Now posteriorly uh, 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 we can pass this as it, this is medial again the cingulate sulcus is reaching serially but it is not now called the cingulate it is now called the subparietal sulcus subparietal sulcus it's a continuation of the cingulate serially along the medial aspect of the brain of the hemisphere and don't forget that this is called the parieto occipital sulcus, separating the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. Now, where we are? Here is the most posterior part of the parietal lobe, which is called the angular gyrus. This is the angular gyrus. Angular gyrus, most posterior part of the parietal lobe. It's called the angular gyrus. So, where is the lesion here? The lesion here is, is at the angular gyrus. Angular gyrus of the parietal lobe. Temporal lobe is limited by the sylvian fissure. And this this is the sylvian fissure, this is limited by the sylvian fissure and as we said that there is uh, three opercular gyri, superior, middle and inferior, one is at the level of the salamus and the other one is at the level of the midbrain and the third one is at the level of the pons, superior, middle, and inferior opercular or middle or temporal gyri, superior, middle, and inferior temporal gyri. Here it is, superior, middle, and inferior temporal, temporal gyri. This one is opposite the salamis, this one is opposite the midbrain, this one is opposite the pons. Don't forget that the, at the region of the hippocampus area, hippo, hippocampal area, the mid, most medial is the amygdala. So this is the hippocampus and this is the amygdala. And that there is a parahippocampal gyrus medially, parahippocampal gyrus going posteriorly. Its name is parahippocampal gyrus. Now I think we have a good idea about some of the brain structures uh, considering the lobes of the brain. So the last one now we have the the one resting on the cerebellum, 
the one resting in the cerebellum is called the fusiform gyrus fusiform gyrus it is limited posteriorly by this line, the yellow line here it is resting in the cerebellum and here it is resting on the cerebellum lying longitudinally and it is called the fusiform gyrus this belongs to the temporal lobe so what are the important gyri in the temporal lobe we have the superior temporal the middle temporal and the inferior temporal corresponding to what corresponding to the three structures seen in the axial where we can get the uh, opercular frontal opercular central opercular posterior opercular then we have now in the axial in the coronal superior temporal middle temporal inferior temporal gyrus and the most the, the lowest one the lowest one here going backward going backward is called the fusiform gyrus this is the one starting here at the region of the hippocampus and going back from the resting on the cerebellum and here is seen resting on the cerebellum in cut section as in coronal position thank you